If you're like most developers, probably the only thing you know about Vim is how difficult it is to quit it. Oh, I literally can't figure out how to exit Vim. It's so difficult. Okay, it was funny the first 100 times, but now you guys need to get a new joke. It's just not funny anymore. But probably the only other thing you think you know about Vim is that it's only used by sysadmins, people working in a Linux server all day, and it couldn't possibly have any use for me, a front-end web developer writing React all day. After all, that's why I have Visual Studio Code, right? But even if you're totally satisfied with your IDE and development environment, I still think you should learn Vim, just because it's so useful once you actually get the hang of it. So let me give you a quick elevator pitch for Vim. So you know how the first time you learned the basic keyboard shortcuts of your computer, like whenever I learned Control C and Control V for the first time in order to copy and paste. After that, it just seems silly to right click on things and click copy and manually paste it with your mouse. So when you saw somebody doing that, you're like, what are you doing? There's so much more efficient ways to be doing that. And that's kind of how it's like to learn Vim. Because Vim basically turns your entire keyboard into shortcuts. So Vim does that by being very different than most text editors. So most text editors, you just type and whatever you type in appears on the screen. But Vim has different modes. So insert mode is the only mode that you can actually type what you normally do. But in normal mode, your entire keyboard turns into keyboard shortcuts. And they're shortcuts for moving text around and getting around your document more efficiently. Like, for instance, instead of manually jumping down here with your arrow keys if you want to go down here, or even worse, clicking down there, uh, you can just jump down by paragraph or by block of code with uh, curly braces. So just jump down like that. And it's really easy to traverse your documents. And there's just so many useful shortcuts you can do. Let's say I want to delete everything inside this parentheses and write something new. So I push C, I, parentheses, and I deleted everything inside there. And now I can type something new. I can delete a line with DD. I can undo it with U. And I can go to these words here, jump forward with W. Let's say I want to delete these three words, D, three, W. And that's done. I can undo that. If I want to copy something, I can use YY to copy, P to paste 100 times. Or I don't have to keep pressing P, 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 P. I can just type uh, 20P and paste it 20 times. So basically, it turns your entire keyboard into keyboard shortcuts that just make life a lot easier. And you can combine all the keyboard shortcuts to make even more keyboard shortcuts. So instead of copy and pasting everything by selecting this and then going down, 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 down. What you can do instead is just go up here with the curly bracket, uh, push V to enter visual mode to select, jump forward with the curly brace, Y to copy, go down here to the bottom and push P to paste. And now we have another one down here without having to manually select it with your mouse or something like that. It's just so much more efficient to type it on the keyboard. And another nice thing is Vim kind of keeps your hands on the home on the home row. So you don't really have to take your hands off of the keyboard to go over to your mouse and then click around and then come back and find your place in the keyboard. Basically, it always has your keys in the touch typing position so that it's, it's really easy to work with your document. So if that all sounded useful, that's just a small amount of what Vim can do. Honestly, I learn new things about Vim every single day just because there's so much to learn with the program. Like, literally just today I learned that I can increment and decrement numbers by pushing Control A and Control X, which is honestly <laughs> really cool. I had no idea Vim could do that. So there's kind of a learning curve to Vim, but once you get really good at it, you'll just be speeding across your documents. So if you want to learn Vim, it's not actually that difficult. What I recommend is going to, what I recommend is opening up Vim Tutor on your command line. And this is like a Vim tutorial. And it'll teach you everything that you need to know about how to navigate Vim. Now, when you first start off, you'll probably be pretty slow at it. And probably the first week 
or two that you spend in Vim, you're not going to be up to your old speed in your preferred text editor. Like it's gonna be a little bit more difficult than doing things in Visual Studio Code, but once you get good at it, it'll really pay off. And for me, a week or two of a little bit less efficiency is gonna be a whole lifetime of faster coding. So for me, it's a pretty easy trade-off. Now, Vim Tutor just teaches you the basics of movement and writing, but once you're done with Vim Tutor, you can watch videos online or read blog posts and just learn more things about Vim every single day. It's really great if you want to optimize your workflow because I'm probably going to be spending the rest of my life coding, so why not spend a little bit to get really good at it just so it's much easier for the rest of my life. So once you go through Vim Tutor, you might be persuaded to use Vim, but let me tell you out of the box, Vim is not that great. Vim is a text editor, it's not like an IDE. So if you wanted to use this uh, instead of VS Code, well, you're missing a lot. So this is Vim, as you can see, there's nothing around here. It doesn't even have syntax highlighting out of the box. So you basically have to configure everything and add a bunch of plugins. If that sounds like way too much work for you, uh, there's also the VS Code plugin called Vim, which will basically give you all the Vim shortcuts with, uh, which will basically give you all the Vim shortcuts inside of VS Code. So this is a lot better than just using Visual Studio Code by itself. I'd recommend this plugin, it's pretty good. And you get all the keyboard shortcuts that you'd learn in Vim Tutor and anywhere else. But for me, I still like Vim as my main editor. But in order to get to this place, so this is the default Vim, and in order to get to something like this, where you have syntax highlighting, uh, I have ESLint in here, so if I delete everything inside here, it's gonna return an error. So you get everything that VS Code does, like linting, prettier, autocomplete, all the features you'd come to expect inside an IDE, you have to manually install those all yourself. So in order to do that, you edit your vimrc. With, it's gonna be .vimrc in your home directory. And I have a whole bunch of stuff in here. And basically, you're going to customize this yourself and put all your preferences in here. Everybody's vimrc is different. And what's really great about vim is you can just customize it to your heart's content. So a lot more than Visual Studio Code or any other editor, you can just customize everything. So I have all these plugins like Vim Polyglot, which, which adds syntax highlighting for every language, Lightline, which is the status bar down here, Emmet, like you would have in Visual Studio Code where you type out a little part of HTML and tab to autocomplete it. So I've basically added all the features that you would have inside Visual Studio Code uh, to Vim. So it's almost like working in a real IDE. And I've been really liking it. So before I was just using Vim for text documents and small things like that, small changes to my code. But starting this month, I'm gonna try to use Vim permanently, like no Visual Studio Code, just all Vim and learn how to work in it and really get good at it. Because I'm proficient in Vim, but I wouldn't call myself an expert in Vim. So that's what I'm gonna do. So when you start off with Vim, you kind of need to do some research and see everything that you need to install to make it a complete IDE. And before you do that, I'd recommend starting with Visual Studio Code and the Vim plugin in order to just get a taste for it and see if you really like Vim. If you really like working in it, then I would jump into the actual Vim and get all these plugins and set it all up to your heart's content. And I think that's the best way to get the most out of Vim. But if you're the kind of person that likes to customize everything about your workflow and really, really tailor it to your preferences, then you're really gonna love Vim because you can just do anything to it. So once you spend a little bit of time in Vim, I don't think there's any going back. It's just too convenient to be able to jump around your document quickly like this and have all these shortcuts at your disposal. So. I'm probably gonna be using Vim for the rest of my life, and I think you should give it a try too. It's not just for system admins, anybody can use it. I even do my writing in Vim, like if I'm taking a note or something, I just write it in Vim just because it's such a great text editor as well. So that's what I recommend.
give it a shot, see if you like it, and let me know. Hopefully I convinced you, but you gotta try it out yourself first to really see how it works. So, go for it.